heritage, perhaps the one word most synonymous with cycling and its most famous finish line in the heart of Paris. But opportunity, at least in terms of gender, has been conspicuous by its absence from the top tier of cycling even now in the 21st century. However, one group of determined individuals got the ball rolling on a venture to change that. And on the 27th of July 2014, La Course by Tour de France, a new single-day women's race on the final day of the men's tour, was born. Catherine Bertin is the catalyst behind it. Uh, I had an idea about five years ago in 2009 when I got into the sport about you know, we don't have a women's tour de France, why is that? How can we change that? And of course at that point I was new into the world of elite cycling, trying to go professional, and really didn't know too many of the key players in the sport, so to speak. So I kind of had a business plan drawn up but didn't really have anywhere to go with it because I didn't have a, a name or a, you know, a voice behind this movement. Luckily for Bertine, her ideas for what was dubbed Le Tour Entier, or the whole tour, were shared by other pros, not least by arguably the best cyclist, male or female, of recent generations. Tour de France has everything in it, and that's why it makes such a, a big event and big inspiration for all people around the world. Um, and women, women cycling has role models, has big names, has fantastic stories, but nobody sees them. Visibility for both male and female athletes is, according to Bertine, the key. She believes cycling can learn from other successful sports such as tennis, athletics and especially triathlon. This is a sport where the men and the women, although they don't technically compete against each other, they do compete on the same course, the same distance, the same day for the same prize money at roughly the same time. So. Right there, that just goes to show you know, that a sport really can you know, sustain itself, not to mention it's very successful. The, the infrastructure of triathlon, it's wealthy, it does an amazing job, it treats its competitors right and equally, and it actually you know, promotes women in sport as, as something that should be. With the likes of Voss, Emma Pooley and others joining the campaign, plus the impetus given by the London 2012 Olympics, the support for Le Tour Entier built up a head of steam. Once I knew that we had these top, top women saying this, I uh, decided to form a, uh, a coalition, so to speak, of putting together um, a movement for the tour and we felt the best way to do that was to do a public petition so that the world could see and have access to signing their support that they would tune in for a women's race. With thousands of signatures gathered, the Tour de France organizers ASO agreed, albeit for one day, to stage the women's race. 13 laps the Champs-Élysées circuit before the publicity caravan and the men reached Paris. A chance for the women's teams and their sponsors to gain new audiences. To have a race at the Tour de France where 150 countries are watching it uh, live is actually pretty um, amazing for women cycling. It's in the middle of Paris, it's a beautiful course, I mean you race around Place de la Concorde, who wouldn't want to do that? But the racing is going to be just the same as all of the other races. There's some really brilliant races out there for women, they just don't get the same exposure um, and hopefully one day they will. But you know, at the Tour de France you've got the media already there uh, and, and just the fact that it gets to be seen is really important. Come race day, the buzz of sharing the Parisian roads is evident. I think I'm pretty lucky of being like the generation where the cycling for women is just growing. And I mean, to be given this opportunity is pretty great. And everyone's rang me up and texted me this morning, like, we'll be watching you, and which is really great. Like, my granddad and my grandma can all watch it. So, no, it's, it's really good. Well, it's really cool. You see the, the environment here around. It's uh, a lot of people, a lot of press. But also to race this race, you always watch on television. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, it would be really good for women cycling to have the real Tour de France again. But I think this is a really good first step and uh, I hope we can show the people that we can race really nice and that we have uh, good, good racing. Who wouldn't want to start road riding when, you, when you're going to watch us race today on, on Chance of the So I think that's hopefully going to bring up um, a lot of girls uh, wanting to, to start riding the bikes. The fans basking in the July sun are treated to two hours of hard racing on the iconic finishing circuit. 
and with the commentary teams already in Paris for the later finale of the Tour de France, audiences worldwide are able to tune in and watch Mariana Vos nick it on the line for the honour of being the winner of the inaugural La Course. It was already a big win to have this event and now uh, yeah, the Sciences Elysees win uh, will be in my uh, list of honour. The riders certainly gave La Course a big thumbs up, a sentiment echoed by new UCI president Brian Cookson. We saw a great race uh, all the way through. There was an attacking, exciting race. We saw uh, a wonderful sprint at the end. The world champion wins, and you can't complain about that, but uh, she was pushed all the way to the line. Our job now, I think, is to sit down with our women's commission and work with ASO and work with other event organisers and work with the teams to make sure that, that uh, roads, women's road cycling develops in a way that's sustainable, that builds on each successful step with another successful step. Time will tell whether La Course captures the imagination of potential sponsors and TV companies, but Bertine, the woman who started it all, isn't resting on her laurels. One day was great for this year, how do we build on that? And that starts now. And once we have you know, UCI doing that and creating these opportunities, then I think there's going to be a really big shift in our entire sport, not just the women, but the, as the saying goes, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So if you're going to have more women in the media for cycling, the men's side of the sport will also thrive. And they really need to thrive right now with all of the, the negative press that's come through the line in the past few years. We can help turn that around.